Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to do a little thermal test on these new dual Raspberry Pi cooling fans. A few companies make them and you're probably going to see more of them, but I bought mine on Amazon for 12 bucks. This one's by CQ Robot and I'll leave a link in the description. Geek Pie also makes one. They're the same exact things. These are very quiet. I thought it would be pretty loud, but it's a very quiet fan system. They don't spin up too fast, but it does keep the pie cool. Go ahead and get this out of the box and take a look. All it is is two fans mounted to an aluminum heatsink. It comes with some 3M thermal adhesive and a small copper heatsink for the RAM chip on the bottom of the pie. Very easy to install. And like I said, this is surprisingly quiet. It's pretty low profile. I was able to fit it in my Nest Pi case and my Collector's Craft SNES case. To install, all you need to do is take this 3M thermal adhesive. I recommend putting it on the heatsink first, and then you're gonna slap it right on the pie. Easy as that. We'll plug in the fan system. Now it's time to test this thing out. As you can see, I also have a small aluminum heat sink. These are the heat sinks that come with different kits like the Canna kit and a few other kits that are available on Amazon. A lot of people use these little heat sinks and they're really good if you got a little fan on them. The test I'm using is a little extreme. It maxes out all four cores, all eight threads for 20 minutes straight. And then it creates a log file and gives me 40 readings in 20 minutes. I've already done it with the small heat sink. This test that you're seeing on screen now is the dual fan test. You should see the CPU usage go up to 100% and we're maxing this out at 1.2 gigahertz. Like I said, this is a pretty extreme test. When you're running RetroPie, you're not gonna max out all four cores and eight threads at 100%, but this will give us a good idea of how the cooling works on both of these heat sinks. At the end of this video, I'm gonna compare both of my log files now I can't fit all 40 logs on screen at one time, but I will leave both log files in the description if you want to download them. The test is almost complete. I'm going to take both of these log files that I've created and compile a little chart for you guys, just so you can see the difference between the small eBay heatsink and the dual fan heatsink. So I took 12 readings from each of the log files and I placed them side by side. The small heatsink is on the left, the dual fan heatsink is on the right. About six minutes into the test with the small heatsink, the CPU started to throttle. That's why it never went above 82.7 degrees Celsius. The Pi 3 was underclocking the CPU to keep it cool. Over with the dual fan, the highest temperature we reached was 66.6 .6 degrees Celsius. I knew that the dual fan system was going to cool way better than that small heatsink was going to do. I mean, we have a lot more aluminum there and two fans cooling that aluminum block. If you already have a heatsink with a small fan on it, you probably don't need to worry about getting this dual fan set up, but it is low profile, very quiet, and it fits in the Nest Pi case. So overall, this is a pretty cool little setup. It's low profile, it's only 12 bucks, and it definitely works. But if your CPU isn't reaching that max temperature threshold, you really don't have to worry about getting something like this. It will not make your Raspberry Pi 3 any faster. It fits inside of the Nest Pi case nicely. Now in all of my tests, this was sitting on my desk, not enclosed. So the temperatures might be a little higher inside of your Nest Pi case, but I don't think it's gonna throttle the CPU. Same thing with the Collector's Craft SNES case. This is the super tiny Tendo case by Collector's Craft. Fits right in there perfectly. The last thing I want to mention is the Flirt case. This is a passively cooled aluminum case for your Raspberry Pi 3. They're $15 on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. I've made a few videos on thermal testing the Flirt case, and I'm going to leave a link in the description. I actually achieved better thermals with the Flirt case versus this little dual fan setup. Now there's a lot of variables that can be thrown in here, like the temperature in the room and things like that, but they're pretty much on par with each other. So if you're looking for a total silent solution, the flirt case is the way to go. But if you're looking to cool your pie in another case, this dual fan setup is a great option. 12 bucks on Amazon, links are in the description. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.